everybody, thanks for joining and welcome to our fifth Project Euler video. In today's video we're going to take a look at the fifth problem, smallest multiple. So the prompt reads, 2520 is the smallest number that can be divided by each of the numbers from 1 through 10 without any remainder. They want us to find the smallest number divisible by 1 through 20. So let's think about how we're going to do this before we actually get into the code. One obvious thing we can do is just multiply the numbers 1 through 10, but that will give us a number that is larger than 2520. So we'll have to figure out what to do from there. So let's go ahead, open a calculator, and see what we can do math-wise in order to make that number reduce to the smallest possible number, such as 2520. So here I'll just go ahead and type 2 times 3 times 4 up to 10. Yes, that number is much larger than 10. So looking through the actual input here, there does appear to be some redundancy. For example, 4 is a multiple of 2, 8 is a multiple of 2, so they share that 2 term. 3, 6, and 9 similarly, 5 and 10. So I'm wondering what we can do here. Maybe we can reduce this to prime factors only, so let's just for now get rid of anything that's not prime and see what happens. So we get this number that is much smaller than the one they gave us. So let's see what happens if we try to divide it by each number. So if it's not divisible by the number when we try it, we'll get a decimal as the result. Okay, so when we got the four, this gave us a decimal value. So I'm thinking, let's add that back into the input. So that gave us a fraction over 2, so I added 2 back into it. That gives us 105. So now I'll go through the rest of the numbers and add back as we need. So going into 8, we have 105 divided by 2. So I added up times 2 again. 9, 280 divided by 3, I'll add it times 3. And let's see with 10, 252. Okay, so that process gave us the number we're looking for, 2520. So first, let's go ahead and code that for the problem that they're requesting 1 through 20, and then we'll come back and see if we can make that a little bit more efficient. The process we just took was multiply, then remove some numbers, and then add some back in if we need to. Maybe we can kind of consolidate those into a smaller number of steps. So let's go over here to our workstation. I'm going to be coding this in TypeScript. If you're not familiar with TypeScript, you should still be able to follow along. The syntax is easy to pick up and very similar to most other languages. I'm going to be using a class for this. That is not required. I just want to use one of the utilities I wrote for running the program and printing out to the console. So get problem name, that'll just be smallest multiple. And for the solve, we'll take the approach we've just described. I'm going to make a helper method do solve, which will just let us have a separate space to work, and I'll provide a maximum parameter where we can set to 10 or 20. Okay, so the first thing we do is multiply the numbers together. So I'm going to set a product to 1. I'm going to make this in a separate method just to make things a little bit cleaner. So the product will start with 1, we'll loop for let i equals 2. No point in starting at 1 because anything times 1 is anything, that same number, so we'll just start at 2. i is less than or equal to max num. Okay, plus plus, we'll just add that to the product and return that product. I'll call this working value, which is the value we'll be working with and adjusting as we go. So now we have the numbers essentially multiplied 1 through 10. So what we did is we got rid of any number which was not prime. So actually, let's save ourselves a little bit of trouble. Let's implement not is prime first, and then we can only add it if it is prime. So I'm going to add a new utility here called primes. 
So I'm adding this as a utility instead of directly in the project so that we can reuse it in the future for future problems if we need to. So I'm going to make a class with some static methods and we can just leverage them directly instead of newing up a new class. So if you're not familiar with static, that just means I can directly use a method from the primes object without saying new prime dot. So the way our prime algorithm is going to work, we're going to compare the values from two up until the square root of the number. So the square root of the number we can consider to be a certain threshold or a line. Every factor of a number will have one on this side, one on this side. So for 10, we'd have two and five. For 36, we could have 12, three and 12, or six and six right on the line. So we only have to do it for the first part of that because the second part will contain the same information. So first let's make that limit is equal to the square root i is less than equal to limit i plus plus if number modulus i is equal to zero return false. Otherwise if that condition is never reached return true. And we'll start the i at 2, not 0. So here we'll say only if it's prime, then we'll add it. So that will correspond to the step of removing redundant values that we took here. So that's the working value. Then for each number between 1 and max non, we're going to divide working value by it. If we get a non-integer, we'll multiply the fractional part into the working value. So we can check that using another modulus operator, if working value mod i, we're going to assign this to a variable actually, const modulus is equal to working value modulus i, if mod not equal to zero. Okay, so the question is how can we use mod to determine what value to multiply back into the number? If we go back to our calculations here, we added that extra three because when we divided by nine, we got 280 divided by three. So the question is, first of all, the question is what is the actual modulus value when we make this division? 93 and one third. Okay, so the modulus value would actually be 3, and i would be 9. So we could actually reduce that fraction. So basically, we just need to reduce the fraction of the modulus versus i. And what we can do is we can get common factors of 3 and 9 and divide them out. So in this integer cl class we created before, I'm going to make a new one called get common factors. And what we'll do is get the factors of both this and that, then return only the common ones. So for now, I'll just do this factor is equals this dot get factors, that factors is equal to integer dot get factors. Okay, so now we have this factors and that factors. What we need to return is the intersection of these two arrays. So what I'll do now is I'll just return this factors dot filter factor and the callback will say check if that factor is, contains this factor. So just to note this isn't the most efficient way of doing this. This has a complexity of n squared or n times m meaning n number of elements here, m number of elements here. This could be made more efficient but we're not going to cover that in this video. I'll make it to do here but we'll save that for a future time when we really need that efficiency. So for here, I will say common factors is equal to new integer i dot get common factors new integer mod. So in the case of 
nine and three, they would both have they would both have one and three inside of them. So then we could divide both of those by three. So I'm gonna make a reduced i equals i constant. Reduced mod equals mod. Not constants, we're gonna be manipulating these. So from there we can go loop over all of the common factors and divide both of them. Then we can multiply the working value times the reduced i. From there we should be able to return working value. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we run this against 10. So the solution that we got was 210, so that is incorrect. So let's see what we did wrong. This loop here, we need to do something. So let's see what we get for all these modulus values. So we're going to log the current value by working value and modulus. Then we're going to log our reduced mod if we have it. So reduced mod should be an integer. So we have something wrong there. So let's see what happens in common factors. So first 210 divided by 8. 105 divided by 4. I think this common factors we have an issue with. Let's just do a little bit of debugging. So we're going to ask this calculator for the common factors and then we're going to use our own algorithm to determine those common factors as well and we'll see where we get wrong. So I believe we're not filtering properly. Okay, so this filter statement we need to update. Instead of index of, since we're using object references, we need to find and compare the values. Good. Okay, so now we have the expected values. Let's go back to our do solve method with 10 and see what we get. So we still get 210. So reduced modulus is giving us 1 all of the time. So reduced mod is giving us 1 for mod 8 to 10. We're getting 2 as the value of modulus. So 2 divided by 8 is 1 divided by 4. So that's why we should be getting 4. So what I'll do here is i mod reduced mod. I'll do a little bit more console logging. We get 210 as the value, 8 as i, 2 as the modulus. 1 as reduced mod. So that's the problem. So let's log the common factors. So reduced i should become 4 in this case. I need to say working. I think I, the assignment was just not correct. So let me run that again with that fix. 1, 2, 6, 0. So we're exactly one half of our result for some reason. So we just need to do a little bit more debugging to figure that out. Let's, I think we need to reverse the direction. i equals max num i is greater than or equal to 2. i minus minus. Okay, yeah, we were approaching it from the wrong direction, so some information was being lost. So here we get 
25, 20, the same answer there. So now we shall run for 20 and see what our response is. So let's go ahead and see if this is correct. Okay, so that's good. We got the right answer. This is better than a brute force solution. So there are definitely ways of making this a little bit more efficient right now where multiplying out a big number then incrementally dividing it and in certain cases multiplying again. So we're pretty close to the mathematically conceptually correct answer. I think if we manipulated our prime numbers a little bit better we could actually get the answer in a couple of reduced steps compared to what we're doing now. But I am satisfied with this solution for now. It's very close to the optimal solution. Hey guys, I want to make a quick comment on the video itself now. So about halfway through recording, I had this idea for a more efficient way of solving the problem and I was debating whether or not I wanted to switch. I decided not to switch so that we could still have the benefit of following the process of implementing and debugging. But while I'm editing the video, I decided to make a quick note and share the approach. So what we can also do to solve this in fewer steps is just take all of the numbers from two to the limit minus one, so two to nine or two to 19. And in reverse order, list out only numbers that are prime or powers of prime numbers. And we don't want redundancy. So for example, for the case of 20, we can list out 19, 17, 16, 13, 11, 9, 7, 5. So I'm not gonna go into the details of how to actually implement that algorithmically, but I thought that was a note worth sharing. So I think that covers the content for today. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications so you can stay up to date on more Project Euler videos. I'm going to be posting these very frequently. Thank you.